One of the first videos I ever did on the channel six years ago was a grade crossing installation. I've learned a lot since then and I've got to install one on the new layout. So let's do that today. This video is brought to you by Model Railroad Academy. Model Railroad Academy is your online resource for model railroad instructions, ideas, and information. With loads of tutorials and articles for model railroaders of every skill level, one of my personal favorites is Alan Keller's Great Model Railroads series. It is just so much fun to look at all of these different model railroads from all of these different great model railroaders and just get inspiration from those. Plus, you can find tutorials on everything from bench work to electronics to scenery, all sorts of things there. The first 1,000 people to sign up at the link in the description below will get a full year of premium membership to Model Railroad Academy for $1.49. Offer is valid for new members only. I am setting up an automatic grade crossing using an Arduino, a DCC current sensor, and a flasher board. I will have all the parts linked in the description below. The one really cool part is the current sensor from Snowball Creek Electronics. Now, I did a video on this a while back when it first came out, and it's really cool. It's a dual zone current sensor, meaning it can detect from two different areas, and it automatically calculates the resting voltage of the track so that it can be more accurate in its calculation. Here is the complete parts list. For DCC current sensing, you will need to set up a detection zone. You can do this by either using an insulated track joiners or by making a small cut in the rails. Basically, you need to isolate one section of a rail, and you only have to do this for one rail in the section, not both. The rail will need its own feeder for power, and that's where the current sensing happens. When you run the feeder, you'll need to wrap it around the coil of the current sensor. Now, other current sensors, like the NCE BD20, will need you to wrap the wire a few times around the coil. The Snowball Creek detector only needs one wrap around. More wraps will not make it more accurate. Let's take a look at how the wiring is set up. Okay, for our wiring, we will be connecting to an Arduino Nano, a flasher board to control the lights, and the sensor. Each sensor has a coil and two outputs. We will be using one of the outputs from each sensor. First, we wrap a feeder wire from each track around the coil. We only need to do that one loop, like I said. Next, we wire up the sensor. We connect the side without the arrow to the ground and the arrow side to pin A0. We do the same for the second sensor, just connecting it to A1 instead of A0. Analog signals are a bit easier to read, and this will provide a more dramatic difference in the signal change so it isn't just hopping from zero to one. Next is the flasher board. Flasher boards are nice because you can control the flashing lights with a simple on or off rather than having to code the flashing pattern in. It makes coding a lot simpler and just takes that part out. This we're connecting to pin five for the negative and the five volt pin for the positive. Lastly, we need to power everything, which means we need to power the Arduino Nano and the sensor. We will be plugging in a 9 volt 1 amp power supply and then splitting it off to run the Arduino and the current sensor. And that's all the wiring for now. We're going to connect two LEDs to test. Now, if that was a little fast and furious, I'm going to include a wiring diagram on the GitHub page that you download this code from. But let's hop into some code itself. Okay, we are in our Arduino IDE, and we have the first section right here, which we have to declare our integers. And what we've done here is we've set sensor 1 as A0, sensor 2 is A1, uh, crossing as pin 5, and we also have one called clear count. And we'll go over what that means in a bit. So let's go ahead and look at the setup here. This is the loop that runs once. Um, we're going to do serial.begin. This is so we can double check and see what the sensors are putting out if we ever need to adjust it. Then we have the pin mode. We're declaring that the digital pin 5 is an output for crossing. So digital pin 5 equals crossing, which is an output. Next step, we need to enumerate the crossing states, which is what we're calling it, crossing state. We have clear, occupied, and clearing. And we're also going to say that the starting state is clear right there. 
Next up, let's take a look at the loop, and we have where we're going to read our sensor. So we're going to declare two new integers, sensor one read and sensor two read, and we say that those are analog read of sensor one and sensor two. Next up, we have our print lines for the serial print so that we can see what our things are, and that is track one, sensor one read is going to show, track two, sensor two read is going to show, and then we also want to see our clear count for when we're using that, and then we put a delay of 500, which basically means it's going to take a reading every half a second with Arduino time being in milliseconds. Next up, let's go down to our switch. So we have crossing state. And we need to say case st underscore clear, which is our crossing clear state. We're going to call that crossing clear. And then that's going to be going from sensor one read and sensor two read. Then we'll break. Now we have case st underscore occupied. So that's going to be crossing occupied, sensor one read, sensor two read, break. And then we're going to have case st underscore clearing, which is going to be crossing clearing. Sensor one read, sensor two read, break. Okay, so we're gonna get into our different states. We're gonna start off with a clear state where nothing is being picked up by the sensor. And we're gonna say that right here. We're gonna say if sensor one read equals zero or is greater than zero and sensor two read is greater than zero, then digital write crossing high. Now what that means is basically when this sensor picks up something, it's going to send back a negative. So it's going to cut everything off and you're going to get a zero value. So if the value you get back from it is greater than zero, it's going to be saying that it doesn't have anything showing up. So if it reads something greater than zero, it's not picking up something. And also the way that we have the flasher board wired up is that basically because we're sending it power versus uh, connecting it to ground, we're going to put it as high is going to make it off. And when we click it to low, that's going to make it turn on. So the crossing high means that the flasher board is off. And then at the end, we're also going to reset the clear count to zero. That's going to come from the end, and that's going to make sense at the end. Now, if we come here and we do if sensor one read equals zero and sensor two read equals zero, we're going to see that it says crossing state equals st underscore occupied. So we're going to move to our occupied state, which we're going to next. Okay, here's our occupied state. This one's really simple. It has the sensor one read and the sensor two read, and it has digital write crossing low. So when you're in that state, the crossing is on. Remember, the high is off, so low is on. That flasher board is going. That's working those signals. Now, if sensor one reads greater than zero again, and sensor two reads greater than zero again, we're going to step into crossing state clearing. Now this is a special kind of a checker to make sure that we're not getting a false clear sensor uh, signal from the sensor. So what we're going to do here is we step into our crossing clearing state right here. And that's going to still be operating the flasher board, digital right, crossing low. And then we're going to do something a little different here. So you can see where it says if sensor one read is greater than zero and sensor two read is greater than zero and clear count is less than five, we're going to have this clear count plus plus, which means it's going to add one to the clear count. And then we have a delay of 1000. So what that means is basically every second up to five seconds, it's going to add and it's going to count up to five that it's clear. And if it makes it to five, which we'll have down here, it's going to turn off the signal. So now we have if sensor one read equals zero or, which is what these two bars are, sensor two read equals zero and clear count is less than five. We reset the clear count to zero and it goes right back up to here. Finally, if we have sensor one read is greater than zero and sensor two read is greater than zero and clear count is greater than four, you can do greater than or equal to five, but I like greater than four. Crossing state equals st clear, which sends us all the way back up to the crossing clear right here. And you can see that we reset the clear count with that one right there. So that is all of the code right there. It works very well. Let's go ahead and see how it works. Okay, we're going to test and see if this works before we put it in on the layout. 
I have a 10K resistor that I can complete the circuit on the track without short circuiting the DCC system. And there we go. Lastly, we need to install our signals. Now I have these cantilever signals that I got off eBay. I'll link those in the description below. First, I drill the holes to install the signals and it took me a couple times to get the right spot. I then thread them through and put the nut that came with them onto the bottom side so that it screws in tight and we have a nice threaded connection that's mounted to it. Now these did come with some resistors, but since I'm powering these with five volts, I'm not gonna worry about using those resistors. I then connect all of the signals up. Now I'm using some terminal strips for this. Please note that your positives, which are the red wires from the signals, all need to share the same connection. And then each of the black negative connections needs to be connected in pairs, one from each signal. And this allows for that flashing effect. Okay, let's run a train over this module. We now have a solid grade crossing signal. Now I personally cannot wait to detail this entire module. It's gonna have a lot of buildings that need to be built and things like that. And I'll be doing that over the next few months. One thing I plan to eventually do is install an accessory power tap from Snowball Creek. They're about five to eight bucks. They're pretty good. And what this will let me do is power the Arduino and the current sensor from track power, which means I don't have to run a separate wire to plug in the power for that. Right now, I'm okay with that, but it's not going to be a permanent thing. I'm going to have the complete list of parts as well as the code all listed in the description below. So you can get all of that there. You can check that out. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.